Welcome to the three-part series where we'll explore F5's newest hardware product offering, the R-Series FIPS appliances. Today, I'll introduce the R-Series FIPS appliances and the F5 OS A platform software that runs on the R-Series appliances. I'll then do a hands-on demo to set up FIPS partition on a R-Series appliance deploy a big IP tenant and assign a FIPS partition to the tenant. I'll then demo FIPS card configuration, backup and restore from an i-series FIPS appliance to a tenant running on the r-series FIPS appliance. Finally, we'll use journeys to migrate big IP configuration from an i-series FIPS appliance to a tenant running on the R-Series FIPS appliance. R-Series is F5's next generation appliance-based solution that replaces the current I-Series platforms. The R-Series FIPS appliances come in two flavors, specifically the R5920 TF replaces the I5820 TF appliances and the R10920DF replaces the I7820DF and 10350VF platforms. The R-Series FIPS appliances will also run the F5 OS A plot platform software. F5 OS A is the new platform layer software that runs on the R-Series appliances. Some key benefits of F5 OS include an API-first architecture, which means that the F5 automation toolchain on the R-Series platforms will make it easy for customers to deploy and configure F5 application services via simple yet powerful declarative interfaces. F5 OS leverages a microservices architecture with an underlying Kubernetes framework for management that is abstracted from the administrator. F5 OS also implements multi-tenancy to allow big IP instances to run as virtual machines on top of the microservices layer. This enables customers to migrate their existing big IP instances or guests to R series tenants without changing the way that they manage their tenants. In the future, Big IP Next tenants can also run on the R series appliances. The R series FIPS variant has many architectural similarities to the non FIPS R series appliances. The R series FIPS variant also include distinct additions such as dual SSDs, a removable fan tray, and a Marvell Level 3 validated FIPS HSM. For today's demo, I'll make the assumption that you're already familiar with setting up and configuring an R-Series appliance. If you need more details on setting up R-Series appliances, now is a good time to go back and watch the three-part demo on F5's Dev Central YouTube channel. To summarize, we've now introduced the R series FIPS appliances and the F5 OS A platform software that runs on the R series FIPS appliance. Let's now jump into the demo. The first step is to log in to the R series FIPS appliances and set up FIPS partition to assign to the tenant. For those of you that are familiar with how FIPS cards are partitioned and assigned to VCMP guests on the 10350VF or the i-series FIPS appliances, the same concepts apply to the R-series FIPS variants as well. The benefit of an HSM is that it supports FIPS multi-tenancy. This allows you to create a virtual HSM, also known 
as a FIPS partition that can be assigned to a VCMP guest or in the case of an R-series FIPS appliance, a tenant that processes FIPS related traffic. A FIPS partition is a portion of SSL cores and private key slots on the HSM that a host administrator can dedicate to a tenant for SSL acceleration and storage of FIPS keys. Let's now log in to an R series FIPS appliance to explore the subject of FIPS partition in more detail. As you can see on the screen, I'm logged into an R series FIPS appliance as a root user via SSH. Let's now log in to the F5 OS CLI. The first step is to initialize the FIPS card on the R series host. So let's go ahead and do that. In order to do that, let's enter the configuration mode and issue the FIPS HSM init command. You're prompted for the SO password, security officer password, which we can enter. Into the new SO password five minutes after we've begun the uh, initialization process the uh, FIPS card has now been successfully initialized keep in mind that this is a this is typically a one-time operation to initialize the uh, FIPS card let's now look at a, a couple of uh, commands to uh, to show FIPS status and the uh, status of the FIPS card on the R series appliance. The first command is the show FIPS status. As you can see here, the um, FIPS card has now successfully initialized. Uh, you can tell from the fact that the state has been set to two that, it, that the initialization process was successful. You also get a uh, number of very useful information, such as the version of firmware that's running on the FIPS card, as well as the uh, model number. Um, the next command that I'd like to highlight is the show FIPS partition command. Now is a good time to note that uh, by default, all of the uh, resources um, as far as uh, acceleration as well as key storage on the FIPS card are assigned to the default partition. Partition 1 is the default partition. As you can see, uh, the FIPS card can store 10,115 keys and all of those, um, all of that key storage as well as the 32 acceleration um, uh, cores that are available are all uh, assigned to the default partition. You need to unallocate resources from this default partition in order to be able to allocate resources to any future uh, partitions that um, you 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 you'll want to create. So let's go ahead and do that. So the command to uh, change uh, resource allocations to a FIPS partition is FIPS set partition the name of the partition the default partition in our case select the number of uh, acceleration cores to assign to the default partition we'll set it to a low number because we're we're not going to be assigning the default partition to tenants we'll also set the number of keys to one and hit enter you're going to be prompted to enter your security officer password and as you can see the uh, default partition has been resized as you can see from the uh, output of the show FIPS partitions command the default partition partition underscore one is now um, 
resize and has a key size of one and has one acceleration core assigned to it. Um, you'll also note that the backup state is disabled. You'll want to set the backup state to enabled when you're creating a partition to assign to a tenant and you're, you're, you're intending to use uh, the partition to do a backup and restore of um, FIPS keys from an i-series uh, appliance. We'll explore this in little more detail in the next command, which we'll now use to create a new partition. The command to create a new partition is the FIPS set partition name. We'll call it partition underscore two will assign four cores to this partition. Let's ensure that we allocate a reasonable size for key capacity. We'll pick 100 in this case. And most importantly, we'll want to enable uh, backup, which will allow us to um, use this partition to migrate uh, keys from the i-series appliance and finally we'll want to in enter a so password as well so hit enter as you can see the um, FIPS partition partition 2 has been created We'll use the show FIPS partition command to display the partitions on the uh, FIPS card. As you can see, the uh, partition 2 that we just created has a key size of 100 and four cores assigned to it. You can also um, use the show FIPS partition and then specify the partition name to drill down um, and get uh, information specific to a partition. So in this case, the show FIPS partitions, partition name, partition 2 will display information specific to partition 2. To summarize, we've now completed the first step in our demo, which is to create a FIPS partition. We were able to do that by resizing the default partition on the FIPS card and then creating a second partition, partition 2, with the backup option enabled. The next step is to deploy a tenant on the R-series appliance and assign the FIPS partition that we created in step 1 to it. 